Good day everyone. Today we are going to present to you the chapter 8, Noise Control, Heat Ventilation and Air Conditioning. It was prepared by Christian Abraham Concepcion, Kevin Lloyd Jerusalem, and yours truly, Cherry May Samudat. I hope that through discussing this chapter, all of us can identify what is noise control and we can know we can know the list of the different sound reduction and etc. Noise control. Noise is a significant environment factor that affects all the issues related to urban environment degradation and quality of life. As we all know, urban areas, or let's just say town or cities, are very crowded and make a lot of noise. The destruction of acoustic climate, which is correlated with transportation and leisure activities, and their repercussion for local land use is one of the result of tourism in urban areas. In modern industrial facilities, noise-induced hearing loss is a serious occupational injury. It can cause injuries for the workplace. As an employer, noise sensitivity must be handled. To handle the noise in the workplace, the, the employer should do some solution to the problem. In order to accurately measure sound level and noise exposure in the workplace, they find a realistic, reliable, and inexpensive noise reduction solution. So, here are some of the sound reduction techniques. Isolated soundproof spaces. You don't have to have the whole office soundproof. Strategically defines places for phone calls and meetings to provide acoustical privacy. Not every office has an ideal outside to enter to make phone calls, and it is important for the caller and their colleagues to have a personal space. For open spaces, I think like this are great. This provides a quiet space when it is needed or tends itself to lively debate without distracting those working directly outside. Second is the acoustic window insert. Acoustic window inserts block up to 70% of external noise and they help avoid noise inside the building since they are made of acrylic. They can also be used to create soundproof spaces that are separated. Soundproof a conference room to They can also be used to create a soundproof spaces that are separated soundproof a conference room to ensure private meetings are truly private instead of using them on external walls so here are some of the example of acoustic window insert here are sound absorption techniques Wall and ceiling panels. For sound absorption, wall and ceiling panels help. It will minimize whatever outside noise passes through your walls, window and doors, and whatever noise is created inside your office. So I have here example of the wall and ceiling panels. Next is a white noise. Sound masking brings to the background is a calming or common and continuous noise, so that distracting noises fade into it, such as conversation. To drown out their colleagues' voices, many employees working in the open offices will download apps with noises such as Unreal Ocean or Spring Walk. The additional of white noise machine is to shared spaces will alleviate the burden of people encourage collaboration rather 
than isolate, isolating the use of headphones. Last is the bring in plants. Plants will help absorb noise while adding to the design. From a living wall to a few laughing ferns. Plus, air is cleaned by plants. Shown to assist with office stress and lead, lead to, more product, to more productive. So, if if the koan the air is, is clean so fresh ang hangin na mugawas nga mas smell sa mga employees so the more fresh ilahang mind the more productive sila so here it is last Heat ventilation and air conditioning. The increase in sensitivity, frequency, and geographic spread of severe heat for a prolonged periods of high temperature is a global societal challenge associated with climate change. With widespread health effects, as even mild elevation of mean global temperature can cause a disproportionate increase in hot days. The main purpose of heating, ventilation, and air, and air conditioning or HVAC system are to help maintain good indoor and quality through adequate ventilation with filtration and provide thermal comfort. So HVAC means heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Systems control the temperature of a room building temperature, humidity, and air quality under the chosen conditions. This is a accomplished by transferring heat and moisture into and out of the air, as well as adjusting the temperature by removing or diluting pollutants to safe levels so we can reduce the amount of pollution in the air. The size and functionality of HVAC systems vary substantially. If they were designed and executed well, they would be a larger and more prominent structure built during the building's development and component of the construction service centralized. They'll employ ventilation to keep things cool. The house is heated and cool. Individual comfort cooling systems have been installed in numerous buildings to address a problem. A specific overheating problem that did not exist or was not apparent at the time of the accident. The original concept considered the massive increase in the use of computers which generates due to the extreme heat. Many older structures now require additional cooling or ventilation. When a building needs to be cooled, the most typical technique is to use comfort conditioning units emerges. So, in energy consumption of HVAC systems, there are five important factors that determine the energy use of HVAC system. So, these are, one is design, layout, and operation of the building. This allows how the external environment impacts on internal temperatures and hum humidity. And two, required indoor temperature and air quality more extreme temperatures greater pre precision and more refined air quality are all factors which lead to the HVAC plant consuming more energy. And number three is heat generated internally by lighting, equipment, and people. And number four is design and efficiency of HVAC plant which provides heat, cooling, and moisture control exactly where it is needed in the building. The number five will be operating times of the HVAC equipment and functionality of the controls. These hunt operations to exactly when the system is needed. Uh, one of the simplest methods to control the expenses of HVAC equipment is to decrease the demand for it, for it in the first place. First and foremost, energy saving measures such as insulation and drought proofing must be 
implemented around your building. Simple measures such as window coverings can lower the amount of heat that enters the structure and hence reduce the amount of cooling e equipment required. Uh, so what kind of HVAC systems do hotels use? So there's three HVAC systems that hotels use and those are package terminal air conditioner, PTAs, vertical terminal air conditioner or VTACs, and variant refrigerant flow or VRF units. So a package terminal air conditioner, sometimes abbreviated as PTAC, is a self-contained heating and cooling system typically used in hotels, motels, senior housing facilities, hospitals, condominiums, apartment complexes, add-on rooms, and sunrooms. Many are built to pass through a wall and have vents and heat sinks on both the inside and the outside. So I'm gonna show you a picture of what a package terminal air conditioner is or what does it look like. So this is what a PTAC look like. So in vertical terminal air conditioner or VTACs help make the most of small spaces like hotel and motel rooms, nursing homes, assisted living centers, offices, apartments, living rooms, and more. They can be installed in closets or, add, or other hidden areas. Their hidden installation aids in the creation of a calm and cool environment in your home. And here is the picture of a VTAC. And the variant refrigerant flow or VRF units, the cooling and heating medium in VRFs is refrigerant. One or more condensing units, outdoor or indoor water or air cold, condition the refrigerant which is then pumped throughout the building to several indoor units. Unlike traditional Chiller based systems, VRF system allow for more precise cooling in more particular locations. Uh, so mostly this is used in malls. So this is the example of a VRF outdoor unit and indoor unit. Why is HVAC or heat ventilation and air conditioning important in hotels? So this is an example of a HVAC system. Comfort and breathability are vital part of enjoying your travel experience. And the last thing you need to do is get bad feedback because of a damp and short-sighted HVAC repair maintenance or installation problems. And many hotels also operate on what can charitably characterize as modest budgets, especially those owned independently. Where else in the hospitality industry is HVAC important? HVAC is also important in hospitals, particularly with the advent of micro hospitals and the trend of the industry to upgrade to newer heating and cooling equipment. You can see uh, HVAC systems most of uh, large buildings. So there is uh, HVAC maintenance. What you need to know first. Thing you need to know in maintenance change air filters when appropriate clean and inspect coil cabinet in cooling system inspect compressor and lubricate and check fan motor inspect control box switches and writing safety controls check and clean uh, blower assembly lubricate and replace belts Clean and clear evaporator coil drip pan. Clean and clear condensate lines. And inspect and clean burner assembly. And also clean ignition system. Test safety controls. Examine heat exchanger. Check duct work. Check thermostat battery and function. It is usually recommended that your hotel commercial heat ventilation air conditioning system be operated on a seasonal basis. This system have high demand and they also have to operate at regular intervals for a long time. Then maintenance should be conducted by an experienced 
trained and qualified skilled technician. Part of the commercial HVAC maintenance process should also involve alerting the customer of any possible problems that might arise in the near future, such as parts that need to be replaced and other issues. Thank you.